So what in the world are user tables and why are there so many of them? Well, I would like to clarify that in this video, give you an overview of the different kinds of user tables that we have and when or when you shouldn't use each of them. So let's kick it off with the user settings table. This is a native client side table used to store variables in app sheet and what is going to happen related to this table is every time you run a sync operation, AppSheet is going to, uh, you know, refresh these variables and use them in your client experience. So a couple of key notes with that. I would highly recommend only using this for security filters. Reason being is because you can do anything else with variables inside of a different table, and it's going to be a much better experience, much more flexible experience relative to using the user settings table. Now, I would like to go ahead and show you where this is within AppSheet and how you can use it. All right, so here we are within AppSheet. In order to get to the user settings table, you'll navigate to the data tab on your left-hand menu. And then at the bottom, you'll see this options drop down. It may be at the bottom of your page unless you've, if, unless you've selected that arrow, in which case you'll see it just like this. So you can select your user settings table. And here you'll notice that we have a number of variables. You get up to 10 variables to set values for. And what the key is, you need to show a column in order for it to be visible and in order to use logic within your application based off of that variable. And let me just quick side note on variables. Variables are commonly used within a, any sort of development framework. It's a temporary storage of information uh, for the, you know, either the whole of a script session or for part of it. And so in our case, what we're doing is we're going to be temporary, temporarily storing these values in either this user settings table. Uh, we could, we could store it in our user table, or we could store it in our user variables table. Again, we'll get cover all three of those in depth. So navigating back to the user settings table, again, we have to show these columns and then we can supply values if we would like. So in this case, I've created an enum column. It is a ref base type, which means that it's storing a key value to a different table. And that table is going to be our project table. All right. And then additionally, what I've done is in our data validity, I've given a list of all project IDs. Now within the app experience, you'll find this in the hamburger menu. And supposing that you have at least one of these columns shown, you'll have this settings view. If you select into it, it is a form view in which you can modify the selections of any of the variables that you've shown. And you can, you can rename these, you can put initial values and things like that. Now it's important to note, if you do initial values, those do not initialize unless a user navigates to the settings view first, which I will say is a little bit frustrating, <laughs> but nevertheless, that's how it's set up. And so it's important to know that your initial values, or even if you have an app formula in one of these user settings, they will not show up or they, they will not compute correctly unless a user navigates to the settings view and saves their changes. So in this case, we've got our project, uh, project entry and our photo category field. So I just have two projects. I'm going to go ahead and select our field install one and move my head, save my changes. Every time you make an adjustment in the user settings table, it always forces a sync, which means that it interrupts the app experience until the sync has concluded. That can be a little frustrating if you're trying to just save a variable that you may use to inform a slice or something like that. Uh, something other than a security filter, which requires that you sync in order to compute. Now, uh, again, this is why I recommend that you only use the user settings table for security filters. 
So being that, that is the case, I want to show you how you can use this in a security filter. So if I select the table, I'm going to select my project photos table. We're just going to imagine that I want to, uh, I want to filter my project photo table based on the project selection that I've made. So I'm going to jump in here to the table settings. I'll jump into security and I'm going to set value, a value equal to a like value. In this case, my project ID foreign key is going to be set equal to my user settings. In quotes, project. I'm going to save my changes. Once I do that, if we were to navigate to a, I guess we'll just navigate to a project, you'll notice that for my field install two, there are no project photos. If I, okay, and if I go to my field install one project, you'll notice that I have photos there. So, Again, uh, the way that you're going to use these variables that are stored in the user settings table is, again, most often going to be in the security filters of your table. And the way that you call that variable is by prefixing your variable name with a user settings and then open parenthesis. Inside the parentheses, you'll put in quotes your variable name and then close it off with a parenthesis. Moving on to our user table. So our user table is going to be a, a data table that we create and it will hold our user's information. And again, this is generally going to be the most secure information relative to a user. It could be their name, their phone number. Uh, if you have extreme use cases, it could hold PII like social security numbers or things like that. And this information you want to keep secure. You want to ensure that only the people that should be editing this information have the ability to edit it. For this reason, you're generally not going to give users the, their own ability to modify their table, even if it is a column that is less relevant. And I want to explain why here in just a moment. So one other thing that you may include in this user table is a designated role for that user. So it could be uh, that they're an administrator of the application. It could be that they're a technician. You know, your use case may supply uh, 10 different roles that may be unique and may inform logic in the app. Um, and in our case, uh, I think I just put an admin as a unique role. But again, every use case may be different in this area. User table is going to hold that user sensitive information, as well as an app role that may be designated by an app administrator. All right. And generally my recommendation for how you should use this table is going to be to use it in filter dropdowns. Uh, it could be related to security filters or column constraints. So depending on the type of user that you are, you may only see a certain type of project. Um, so anyway, there's just an idea for you. And we covered that in the, uh, in the data overview. And as this is not the focus of our time throughout these sessions, I haven't allocated time toward building out an interface in the app for you to see this, but theoretically there would be a, an interface for an administrator to modify users, add users and so on. And generally you're going to place specific table permissions on this user table that will ensure that non-administrators or people that shouldn't be editing their own data cannot do so. Finally, we have our user variables table. The user variables table is, again, a place to store temporary uh, and dynamic values 
that will be used to inform app logic. So in our use case, I have two variables. I've got a project and I've got a project photo category that we're going to be using in order to dynamically filter data in our application without the need to resync our data. So my recommendation for when you should use the user variables table, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say you should probably add it in every single application that you make unless it's not a uh, unless it's a public application, in which case you won't have easy access to user information. Um, so again, add it to virtually every app that you're going to make and you're going to be using it for a custom UI implementation. Uh, you're going to be using it for performance optimization so that you can ensure that you are pulling in the data that is going to be relevant to that user. You can track things like that in the background. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with a user variables table. Really, the sky is the limit. And using that information that you capture about your user or that they input dynamically to inform what data comes into the application and how that information is uh, visualized to that user. So let's go ahead and jump into our application. And what I would like to show you is how this has been used in our use case here. I've created this photos, uh, sorry, photo review gallery input. If I select that, you'll see I get a list of my projects. And so that gallery view then navigated to a view of the project table. And whenever I select a project here, what's going to happen is it navigates me to a dashboard where I can dynamically filter what photos I wanna see. Now, upon navigating to this dashboard, one thing that is important to note is that the project has already been preset. That was as a result of an input action that I will discuss in the next video. But that input action is allowing you to dynamically input the project related to what they selected in the previous screen. And what this does here is in the dashboard, we have a view of the user variables table. We have a view of one project photo here at the top right. And we have our current project photos. These are all of the photos related to our project. So if I unselect a category, it will show me all categories. If I have a category selected, it's just going to show me the ones that are related to that category. And I want to show you how we built this as well. So I'm going to jump in here to the project photo table. And as I hit that drop down, you'll see I have a slice called current project photos. This is what we call a dynamic dashboard. Whenever you have dynamic inputs on one side of a dashboard that allow you to, that, to filter dynamically a separate table. So in this case, where we have a view of our user variables table, we have a series of variables or properties that we can modify, and we are using this user variables table to, uh, to modify a slice of our project photos table. So generally, whenever you're creating one of these dynamic dashboards, you're going to be wrapping everything that you have in an AND function. And essentially what you're evaluating is whether or not a certain column in your user variables table is blank. If it is, then it should just be true. So it will not filter by that condition. Otherwise, it will filter by that condition. So in our case, it's in the project photos table, evaluating whether or not the project ID foreign key is equal to the user variables project column. And then in addition, we have another filter condition on the photo category. So if it's blank, then it just returns all photo categories. Otherwise, it returns only the photo categories that are relevant to or consistent with the one that was selected in the dashboard. Now, 
One thing that is pertinent to note, you'll notice that anytime I'm referencing a value from the user variables table, I'm simply doing a query on the user variables table, returning the column that I want, and then wrapping that in an any function. That may not be the case for all data types. So if you had an enum list, you may have to do something different there. Um, in addition, you would be comparing it differently as well. You may, you may do an in uh, as opposed to a value equals value, or you may have an intersect uh, that would return a list of overlapping values. In our case, I was trying to keep it simple and we just got a single value in each of our columns to make comparisons easier. Now these conditions, these filter conditions are going to compound upon one another. So if you select a project, it will filter your project photos to just that project. And if you select a photo category, it not only filters the project, but also a photo category. Um, the reason that I'm able to do this, this sort of syntax where I'm just doing a query of the user variables table, returning a column and wrapping that in any function is because I am security filtering my user variables table by the current user. So I wanna show you that as well because theoretically you're going to have a series of users in your application, could be 10, could be 100, could be 1,000. And in theory, you would want a user variables record for each of them so that you can have unique filtering. Now, the good news is uh, each user only needs access to their own data. And so in our table settings, we're gonna navigate to security and you'll see here that our email column is set to the current user email function. Again, this is only relevant to non-public app use cases, but that is the vast majority that are created on an app sheet, so it's relevant here. All right, that will conclude our overview of the three main user tables that we might use in app sheet.